Continuing from a previous example where we saw that given these three conditional means, the conditional mean function cannot be linear. Now we will look at a way to write the CMF that is properly specified. And we will do that using dummy variables uh, and using indicator functions. So in particular, there are multiple possible ways to do this, but we will look at this functional form, m of x equals beta naught plus beta 1 times an indicator that x equals 1 plus beta 2 times an indicator that x equals 2. So first we can see if we compute m of 0, the indicator function for x equals 1, that will evaluate to 0 because we'll have an indicator that 0 equals 1, and we know 0 is not equal to 1, so that will turn out to be a 0. And then regardless of beta 1, that entire term will be 0. Similarly, when x is 0, this indicator that x equals 2 will evaluate to 0. So then regardless of what beta 2 is, we'll get another 0 here in the last term. So the only non-zero term that we'll have left is beta 0. Then we can plug in m of 1. So we'll always get this beta 0 because there's no x involved in that term. Now our indicator that x equals 1 is an indicator that 1 equals 1, which is true. So that indicator function evaluates to 1, and we'll get beta 1 times 1 for that second term. 1, or just beta 1. The third term, though, still evaluates to 0 because we have an indicator that 1 equals 2, which is not true. So we get a 0 there. And then similarly, if we plug in x equals 2, we can write a better 2 than that. Uh, again, we always get that beta naught. Now we do not get the indicator that x equals 1, because x does not equal 1, x is 2. So that middle term will be 0. But we'll pick up that last term because that last indicator function will be equal to 1. So we can see here how we can write the CMF values, m of 0, m of 1, m of 2, in terms of the three parameters, beta naught, beta 1, and beta 2. We can also do some arithmetic to solve for beta 1 and solve for beta 2. So if we subtract the first line from the second line, we'll see, sorry, that's supposed to be a 0. Uh, we'll have beta naught plus beta 1 minus beta naught which is beta 1. And if we subtract the first line from the third line, similarly, that lets us get rid of that beta naught. Plus beta 2. And we get beta 2. So we can interpret these beta parameters or coefficients in terms of the underlying conditional mean values in this case. Um, and just the last point to point out is you can see now in our 
conditional mean function, we have these three values, and now we have these three parameters. So we have enough flexibility, we have enough parameters in our model to capture whatever functional form the true CMF has.